Hey guys, I want to talk to you more about the Revelations prologue trailer and some thoughts that I had about how I think the zombie storyline was influenced. And a big shout out to Katie, Ashley, Ashley's mom, Slick, and Kevin. We've all been talking and noticed some fascinating similarities with it and the Christian religion and its stories. Recently, Mr. Raffle Waffles had done an interview with Jason Blundell and he had said some key things that gave us hints to understanding the zombie storyline a little bit more. First, he mentioned that a lot of the community has only just scratched the surface of the meaning and intent behind a lot of what they do. And I'll get into that in a moment. He then goes on to say that he thrives on storytelling and in the earlier parts of his career he would travel around to different countries. He would learn as much as he could about the different cultures and their mythology and philosophy. And he's taken all the ideas like that and included physics and science, mixed it all together inside a big cauldron and that's a big part of what zombies is. This is not a surprise as a lot of Hollywood movies, children's stories, and best-selling books are crafted around the basic tenets of religion. Religion can be defined as a cultural system of behaviors and practices, worldviews, sacred texts, holy places, ethics, and societal organization that relate humanity to what anthropologist has called an order of existence. One example of theology in the zombie storyline can be seen in the similarities in the book of the New Testament, which occupies a central place in Christian theology called the book of Revelation, and is often referred to as the apocalypse. Revelations was the last story in the Bible, and it's also the last map in the end of the eight-year zombie storyline. Its title is derived from the Greek word apocalypse, meaning unveiling or a surprising or previously unknown fact especially one that's made known in a dramatic way, the divine or supernatural disclosure to humans of something relating to human existence or the world. There are several similarities in the zombie storyline and the book of Revelations. The book talks about four horsemen of the apocalypse, and you can see similarities in how the horsemen are described in the book and the four main characters. It also mentions a red dragon, and we've definitely seen a couple of those on Garad Karovi. I always wondered why they made the dragons red, and it's very possible that it was influenced by the stories from the book of Revelations. Or it could be that red is a representation of Russia, and that's why they made him red. It also mentions a god and an evil false prophet, as we all know as the devil. By now, I think most of us understand that Dr. Mani is classified as a type of god and or creator of everything, and I think it's safe to say that the shadow man would represent the devil. In Christian theology, it talks about how the devil was originally an angel that got corrupted, which sounds a lot like how the keepers were good and then the ones that got corrupted became the apothecons. And we all know that the shadow man is adorned with apothecon language on his jacket, which clearly implies he's one of the bad guys. Also on his jacket, he proudly wears an apothecon symbol that translates into beast. In the book of Revelations, they also talk about how all the sinners on earth got marked with a 666, either on their hand or their forehead, which is called the mark of the beast. If you noticed in Shadows of Evil, the four characters have some great sin that they committed and are now marked with this beast symbol on their hand, which implies that yes, the shadow man is a type of beast and or devil, and if you look at the symbol, it could almost represent three sixes, so it seems like the symbol could have been designed and influenced by that. They also seem to be using the Cthulhu mythos to help create the shadow man using one of the cosmic gods in the stories. I've made a couple of videos about that, so I won't go into any detail. Another similarity in the zombie storyline is the lion. A lion is a very iconic animal in a lot of religious stories, and when a lion is mentioned, it's representing a king or a great one. That could be the reason behind the lion head that you see on the gumball machines and also the statues on Shadows of Evil that give you a gumball. These things represent Dr. Mani and we already know that he's a type of god in the storyline. The next thing that I think is really fascinating is what we saw in the prologue trailer. There's a scene where it seems like the shadow man conjures up this big blue glowing spherical mass. I think we can all agree that this is a large source of element 115, if not the original source. Treyarch seems to be putting a great emphasis on this glowing mass. You see it on the PS4 theme, and they use it on their website to advertise the map, so it must be important for them to use it to represent the map with it. I was talking to a few of my close friends, Katie, Ashley, and their mom, and they said they were starting to see similarities to the biblical stories in the book of Revelations and the last zombies map called Revelation. They decided to look at biblical references using the numbers 115 and 935. They went to the very first part of the Bible called Genesis. Genesis in the Bible is described as the very beginning of all creation. They decided to look at the verse Genesis 115, and right before 115, five, it said, in the beginning, God created the heavens, the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was 
over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Then the next verse is the Genesis 1-1-5, and it says that God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. I'm sure we can all agree that the light was like the sun and the energy source for life. When they reminded me of this passage in the Bible, I recalled something I had seen on Reddit. Someone had gotten into the game files and found that the name of the Revelations map is actually called Genesis. Genesis is the name of the map that Treyarch calls it. For example, Garod Karovi is not Garod Karovi in the files, it's actually called Stalingrad. So they call the maps by the names of what they really are in the files, but then give us a really dressed up fancy name when they give it to us. So again, Genesis means the very beginning of creation, and Revelation means the very end. So we're seeing two very strong biblical references here, and DLC 4 is the creation or beginning and also the end. And reading the Genesis 115 passage where the light and energy source is created, and then seeing how the shadow man spawns in this giant element 115 energy source, it starts to make sense. It seems like the light and energy source in this universe is element 115 and is like the sun in our universe and appears to have been created by the shadow man. Also, the book of Revelations, one of the last chapters, is called The Last Battle, and it's where evil is defeated forever. So when I think about that, it reminds me of the mural on Shadows of Evil where it depicts a large battle and the good is on the left and the evil's on the right. So I think this is a representation of a great battle we might be facing with the Apothecons and zombies. And I hope we finally get to see that tentacle monster that we saw in Zetsubonoshima that we do see on the mural and also on a mural on Zetsubonoshima down in the Keeper area with the skull of Nansapwa. So you can definitely see the influence of Christian theology along with other mythology and philosophies. To me, it seems like the last map has a ton of biblical and Cthulhu mythology. They've done an amazing job of making this all fit and work together, and the clues are definitely there. And I think a lot of us are finally picking up on the meaning and intent behind it all. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you guys next video.